Hi everybody, this is Mark from Mark's Mandalas, and this video is going to show you how you can smooth out your rocks and even uh, put a nice uh, dark base color on them um, all in one step. And so if you have ever painted on a rock then a dot mandala on there and you found the dots uh, had some issues because of pits or imperfections uh, being a rough rock, um, this video is definitely going to help you out. Almost three years ago, I showed a way that you could smooth rocks using spackle. And it works, you know, really well, but it's messy. You have to apply the spackle, let it dry, and then sand off all the excess. And that takes some time, and it takes some effort, and it's messy. Um, I wanted to find something for people uh, that don't want to have to do those steps and also don't have the space to do it. And I found a way that you can smooth your rocks without ever having to leave uh, your apartment, you can do your house, anywhere that you're at, you can do this anywhere. And I show everything that you need to do this. And as a matter of fact, here is one that I've already already done. And this one is all prepped and ready for me to, to create a dot mandala on it. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this um, in this video. And I found this product here PBO, or it's GDO by PBO. It's a black resin. You can see right at the, the top here. Um, I've used them, uh, I use their crystal clear resin for doing my pendants, and I've also used that, uh, the clear for um, covering my artwork on rocks as well. And uh, I've been very happy with this brand. So, and I have a variation of everything here on my website. If you'd like to purchase it on Amazon, a couple of the items you can find, if you have the stores uh, local, you can find them a little less expensive. Um, as far as like these brushes, they're called Acid Shop brushes. And you get the packaging in frame here. I got these at Harbor Freight. There's 36 of them, and I got them for about two and a half dollars. Um, then I also have purchased some craft sticks or popsicle sticks, whatever you want to call them. I got these at Dollar Tree, so uh, they cost me a dollar for a hundred of them. And uh, But I have links on my website for these as well if you don't have those stores close by or if you would rather just make one order for all the supplies that you need. Um, something else, well now I've shown you the brush, the craft sticks, uh, the resin that's used, and also these cups. Um, in this kit you do get a couple measuring cups and some plastic gloves. Uh, as well as a couple stir sticks. But I found these on Amazon, and what's nice is you don't need very much resin to to cover these for smoothing. And so what I can do, let's see if I can get this where you can see that. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Maybe I put some black background on there. I can pour what I want to. For example, you, it's a two to one ratio, one part hardener to two parts resin. And so um, for this demonstration, I'm going to be pouring five milliliters of hardener in this cup, and then I'm going to pour 10 milliliters of the resin. And I can just use this cup to stir it with. And uh, I have two cups here because after stirring for a couple of minutes, you have to pour it into this cup and, and stir for a couple of more minutes to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. But you can just dispose of these cups. They're very inexpensive. They're also going to be on my website. I'm going to put links as well in the uh, in the description of this video too. Um, so now we've got, and also rubber gloves. Uh, I'm going to, and I always use rubber gloves when I'm using resin because you don't want that stuff getting on your hands. It can be a big mess. So um, a recent discovery, I was trying to find a way, because when I've done resin in the past on rocks, the big problem is once you've resin, it will run down the sides and it'll pull up underneath and it's very difficult to pry it up off of whatever it's sitting on. And uh, through some posts that I've seen online, there are some very helpful people that suggested a silicone mat. And these things are absolutely phenomenal. These rocks that I did testing this out just peeled right off. And in fact, you can see there's a nice flat surface. What actually, I, I like that being on there. It keeps this rock nice and stationary. It won't rock around once you've uh, once you've done this this smoothing here uh, technique. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I'm going to show you the few steps it takes. the The most challenging thing is patience because after you apply the resin uh, to your rocks, you need to have them sit for 
uh, I would say at least 24 hours, depending on where you live and how warm it is. I'm down in Arizona, so it doesn't take as long in the warmer temperatures. So, uh, but if it's cooler, you want to wait 48 or even 72 hours. So the, the hardest part is, is waiting once you've resined it. Otherwise, it's very easy. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with the demonstration now. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and get started. So what, first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to put my gloves on, because you don't want this stuff getting on you. And let's run out of frame here as I'm putting this second glove on. There you go, all gloved up, ready to go. So now what you want to do is there's, it's this two part resin and you have, this is the resin. This, is a, this kit is a 150 milliliter kit. So this is 100 milliliters of black resin and this is 50 milliliters of hardener. And it's a two to one ratio. So for every one part of the hardener, you add two parts of the resin. And I have found that for some reason, this little bottle, I have a difficulty in pouring it out without it dribbling down the side. So what I have done is I have poured it into one of these little bottles like this and I have uh, a better time of not wasting as much dribbling down the side. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour five milliliters of this hardener into the cup first and then I'm going to pour in 10 milliliters uh, of the black resin on top of this and you're going to see uh, in the measuring cup as I pour it that once I hit five I'll stop and then I will go up to 15 milliliters to uh, for a total of 15 milliliters because I'm going to be putting 10 of this in. So uh, here we go. Let me go ahead and start pouring that in now. And you don't need very much. Five milliliters is a very small amount. So now I'm going to go ahead and add 10 milliliters and I'm a little bit under that, that five line so I'm going to end up being a little bit under the 15 milliliter line if I do this properly. Because I want to get pretty close to a two to one ratio. It doesn't have to be exact but I think the closer you are, the better the results are going to be. So there, now I have my 15 milliliters total. And I am going to move these rocks out of the way. And I am just going to stir this uh, for a couple of minutes. And I'm going to fast forward these couple minutes a little bit, speed it up a little bit for you. Let's see if I can do this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not going real fast. I'm going back and forth. Um, I'm scraping the sides. I'm left-handed, so let's see. For the camera, it's better to stir right-handed. So you want to scrape along the sides. You want to go back and forth. You don't want to stir real vigorously. The, the more aggressively you stir, the more likely you are to uh, put air bubbles in here. Um, but you don't have to worry about, with this GDO resin, you don't have to worry about torching uh, this resin to get rid of air bubbles like you do with uh, um, other brands that are out there. This is really low maintenance. It's low odor. I have no problems with any kind of smell right now. And um, I'm in the dining room area of uh, the apartment that we're at down here in Arizona right now. And so, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stir this for another minute or so before I transfer it to the other cup and continue stirring. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes, and now I'm gonna go ahead and pour this resin into the other cup. You also wanna make sure that underneath the silicone mat that you have a surface you're not worried about getting um, resin on or you know anything bad happening to it. So uh, don't do this on your nice antique 
wood table somewhere there it can get damaged. Just want to bring that up in case uh, that was a possibility. So I'm scraping inside this first cup pretty good. I'm trying to get as much out as I can. Even though for this demonstration, I don't need as much resin as I prepared. Um, if you're curious as far as cost goes, um, this 150 milliliter kit was, I believe, about $20 plus tax. Um, and so if you use 15 milliliters in a session, which should, you know, give you the opportunity to, to uh, smooth, I would say three to six rocks if they're about this size. Uh, so when you break that down, it's not terribly expensive. It's a little more expensive, I think, than the spackle version, but it's, um, it's still, I think, in the very affordable realm. I mean, especially for the results that, that you get with it. So I, if you're concerned about costing a couple dollars to, to smooth a rock with this technique, it doesn't. It's, I would say, approximately 30 cents a rock, but it just depends on how many rocks you're doing and what size they are and you know a few different factors. But I would say approximately 30 cents a rock, give or take. So I'm going to stir this for about another minute, minute and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and speed this video up so you don't have to watch me do this the entire time. Okay. That is, I think, going to be good enough. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this stick off your best I can. I'm going to set it in here. See, and I have actually, there's a ring underneath this table here. I'm going to go get a paper towel real fast because I forgot to grab one. And not to worry, this is not an antique wood table. It's just a crafting plastic folding table. But good idea to have something to set this stuff on. So now I have the resin is all mixed. Um, if you're doing other things, I think especially with clear resin, or things where you're gonna be pouring a thicker layer of this in there, you might wanna let it rest for uh, for a few minutes, let the air bubbles um, rise out of there. But this is gonna be on fairly thin and the air, any air bubbles that are in there are gonna dissipate as this rests anyways. Um, so what I'm going to do, let me get this out of the way here. And I'm gonna make sure that I have enough room here. Once I brush these on, I'm gonna put a cover over the top of them. And that's just to prevent any kind of um, dust or bugs flying around, wanna land on it. Um, anything that can happen to it, you wanna put some sort of a cover on there to prevent you know, and as far as anything landing on there and, and, and messing it up. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and just, I just take this brush and I'm going to just brush this on. I'm a lefty and I'm on the wrong side of the camera, so I'm going to have to learn to paint right-handed, but I guess that will uh, show how, how easy this is. And as I, okay. So I'll have to spin this around occasionally to get around the sides. And you don't have to be real neat with this because it's self-leveling. So it's just a matter of getting good coverage on here. You don't need to overdo it because a lot of this is going to run over the sides and it's, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better it's gonna run over the sides and you know, you're know you gonna end up with a, an, an even thin layer uh, that fills in all the pits and imperfections on the rock. And with this black resin, I like to paint my dot mandalas on a black background most of the time. Uh, so I really like the fact I don't have to worry about, about spray painting these rocks. I usually use spray paint and I would rather just do one step. I think it's a lot easier. And you want to kind of get it down below here because there's going to be some little 
on the bottom side, there'll be some little empty spots. Now it looks like it's covered pretty good, but I'm gonna, this is another reason I wanna wear gloves. Of course I could actually, I guess, I could use an extra one of these popsicle sticks here and spin that. And as you can see, there's some area there on the side that's still exposed. And I'm gonna move this resin out of the way because I'm gonna spin this rock again. And you can see on the back side here, there's this area. I'm sorry this video is taking as long as it is, but I wanna make sure that I, I uh, thoroughly explain how to do this. Any parts that you're comfortable with, you can just fast forward through. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do these other two rocks. You can see, sorry, I keep bumping the stand the camera's on. There's still a lot of resin in here after I painting one rock. So you can get quite a few rocks painted in you know, in a session with just a little bit of resin. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this back out again. And I'm gonna do my right-handed painting. And you see I'm getting resin on this mat. It won't matter, this stuff just peels right off. Once it dries, once it's fully cured, um, you can just peel it right off this silicone mat. So you don't have to worry about getting resin on here and, and have to worry about it sticking on here and, and making it difficult to do future future rock smoothing. I'm going to go ahead, I think I'm just going to go ahead and speed up the, uh, the video here so you can watch me paint these, but you don't have to watch it at regular time. So go ahead and stand by and, and I'll be done with this in just a moment. Okay, well, now I'm, I'm done doing that. And as you can see, I wasn't uh, being, you know, as far as uh, stingy with, with the resin. I was brushing on pretty thick. And I'm gonna try to zoom in here and you might kind of see, it's, it's kind of, it's glossy, so it might be hard to see because of the lighting. But this, um, oh, in fact, you know what? There's a, uh, Tweezers are another really good thing to have. So let me get my tweezers real fast and I'll be right back because there is a little, move that, little hair. Right there. So I'm gonna get that up before the resin sets up and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with my tweezers, and let me see if I can get this without too much effort. The nice thing about this resin being self-leveling is you can do stuff like this. There we go. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I got that hair out of there. Um, I scratched along there, but this resin is still, it's um, still, you know, not set up at all. It hasn't cured at all yet, so you can do that kind of stuff. Now, you'll also notice, I started to talk about it, it's kind of blotchy looking almost. And I kind of like the fact that some of the rock grain comes through that black background. Uh, but if you want it to be a solid black background, then I would either spray paint it black um, or brush on black. And even the brush mark should fill in as far as with, um, you know, with the, with the resin, it should fill in all the little uneven areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a cover on this. 
and let me grab my cover real quick. Okay, I went and got my my cover, and I'm going to use the bottom of a plastic tub for a cover, and I'm going to try to slide it in here over the rocks. You want to make sure that inside whatever lid you're going to put over your rocks is clean on the inside because anything that's inside your cover could fall down onto your rocks and that would defeat the purpose of putting it on there in the first place. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let these sit for at least 24 hours. I'm going to come back tomorrow um, about this time, uh, but through the magic of editing, you won't have to sit here and watch this for the next 24 hours and they should be pretty set up by then. If they're not, I'll wait longer, but once again, it won't affect you as all, uh, at all. And I will show you the end results. And I've also, it looks like I've used about half that resin for three of those rocks. So it looks like I could have painted about six rocks to kind of help you do the math on how expensive it is to do something like this. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this for now. And next time I see you, these rocks should be all cured and ready for me to show you how they look. Okay, it's been a little over 24 hours now. Not by much though. And I'm gonna take a look at the rocks and see if uh, if they're cured. So I'm gonna pull this lid off of here. Oops, bump the stand. And I'm gonna show you how you can uh, check to see if, uh, if they're fairly set up, totally set up, still wet and sticky um, without even touching them. And that's with your leftover resin. So what you can do is I'll come over here and it's kind of the first step. You can see this is pretty dry in there. I shouldn't hold those over the rocks in case they're not cured, but um, well, they all came out together. And it's kind of funny because you can see, see if I can get that to show up on there. You can see the markings for the measurements from inside that cup. Um, but anyway, I'm going to break that off of there. And I'm just going to poke this. And that's pretty darn warm. You see I'm not wearing gloves right now because uh, I'm fairly confident this, this is all set up enough. So I, I'm going to feel this. And you can take a... If it feels fairly solid, not sticky at all, next step you can try putting a fingernail in there. And... I could mark that with the fingernail. I'm not sure if that's going to show up on camera or not, but I was able to make an indent with, the, with my fingernail. So it's not fully cured, but it's cured enough to be able to peel them off of this mat and to show you how well this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just show you how easy these come off. Just like that. It's that easy. If you have ever done resin before and had it stick to different surfaces, you know how big of a headache that can be. And it's so nice to have um, it just peel right off. Plus it gives you a nice flat surface to when you're done painting this and you want to display it, it's going to lay flat every time. So I'm going to set that over here and it's not sticky at all. Even though it's not fully cured, I would still wait another day at least before I paint on it. But um, this is going to at least show you the, the process. And once again, that just comes right up. And this is, I think this will show up on here as far as um, you can see kind of some of the rock grain through here. This other rock, I think, will show it best. It looks like it's a little bit lighter. Um, it's not black, and there is some rock grain in there. If you like that effect, then you don't need to do anything else. Otherwise, if you want it to be a solid color, then I would recommend um, painting the rock first, whatever color. Or you can paint it afterwards. It doesn't matter if you're just like... Uh, I want you change your mind. You can paint it whatever color you want to. You have a nice smooth surface here now. And I talked about cleanup on this mat. Let me just show you how easy this comes off of here. Just like that. So cleaning up this mat for its next use is, uh, is really easy to do. And uh, this pretty much concludes the, the demonstration on how to uh, do your rock smoothing 2.0. No spackle, no sanding, uh, you know, really minimal mess. The biggest thing is just uh, having to wait for it to cure. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment uh, on this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, 
and reach out if you have any questions about anything. Until next time, rock on.